Good morning. I'm coming from France. We have no policy on BIM, but maybe we have some knowledge on BIM. Uh, I am charged of to develop the BIM project inside my company. And at the same time, I am sharing the, in Building Smart, in Building Smart International, the infrastructure room. That means that we are challenging the extension of IFC to the infrastructure. And for this reason, I participate to the uh, works of the CDR with Herman. I participate, to, I participate also to the works with the OGC, with the common agreement between uh, Building Smart and OGC for the development of open standard for infra. Mm -hmm. And I am also leading a very important research project in France called MIND. And MIND means uh, modeling the interoperable, interoperable information for infrastructures, not in six dimension, but in n dimension. We are better than Topcom. Um, okay, um, where is that? Uh, how that works? How, how that works? Okay, my company, just a brief presentation of uh, Aegis. Aegis is a French company with a turnover of uh, close to one billion of dollar. Um, to, to, uh, we have two activities. One is 20% uh, of our activities in operation for road and airport. And the other is to about, about engineering. And we cover more or less all of the scope of engineering for infra, from building to uh, road, rail, and, uh, and uh, nuclear uh, plants. And at the moment, uh, we are close to 55% of our activities outside France. Uh, and we have part of a very large project in the Middle East. That's the reason we work uh, aware BIM is very much uh, required by, by, the, by the owners. Okay, our, our main presentation is going to cover three parts. Uh, what does it mean being in our project? What is the perspective? And maybe some crucial uh, uh, ideas about the uh, concept, uh, some concept for BIM. <coughs> okay, how that works? Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so, first question what does it mean BIM? Is it tools or process? And uh, oh. uh, first of all, I welcome to say that BIM is process, process, and tools for processes. That is very important for us. That means it has to be part of our contract and our project management plan. I am engineer. And my problem is not to, uh, it's not only to, to prove that BIM is useful for the owner, I have also to save money with that. That's my first problem. So that means that it has to be inserted in my process, and that means that I, have, I am obliged to redefine all of my processes of design uh, around, around <coughs> that. That means that for me, BIM is not a question of 3D. BIM is a question of 3D object and collaborative ways to manage the project. And that means that it's part of the contract. That means it has to be part of our project management. And that means that we have different, different states and step, and it's, we have to oblige to redefine the status of the data, the, statu the status <coughs> of the stakeholders and so on during all of the life cycle of the project. Uh, and uh, that is a, it simplify the, 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 the scheme. But beam inside that means that we have the, um, on the left side, you have the different 
uh, uh, skill uh, software uh, or activities. And obviously, we have much more than three. Uh, we have the tools, and then you have the collaborative. Here you have the, um, the, 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 activi the services. Here you have the, tool, the, the tools, and we integrate here on the upper part the GIS, it's, it's a tool as another one. And here you have the shared space. This, this scheme is more or less based on the British standard uh, 11, 20, uh, 1192. And the concept of shared space is for us very, very crucial. Why? Because it's a way to change the process. And for us, there is two things around that very crucial to save money. The first is to be able to uh, manage the workflow. And the workflow is crucial in the beam process for us. But the money is there, the contract is there. Not on the 3D object, but on the workflow. And then it's also the possibility to change the process to say to have the approval pro process before the deliverables. For me, as an engineer, wh wh where is the cost? The cost is on the deliverables. So the only one way to save time and to save money is to change the process and to say that the, 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 the mandatory deliverables is the model. And to have a shared space with the, cli with the client could be the, the, the contractor in the PPP contract or uh, the, the, the owner, the public owner in a, a, a public contract, to have the decision around the model before to have deliverables. BIM for us means to say to have less time to produce, less money to produce, and it requests higher quality. The only one way for me to save money is to change the process. Is the, if you want to have a deliverable, I ask to the owner or to the contractor to, 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 to approve my design before any deliverables. And then, in this issue, the question of open, of interoperability and open standard is really crucial. I'm going to show you some pictures and some projects, but in any case, at the moment, I'm speaking for infrastructure. The, the question of open beam is totally open. In a project of, uh, of infrastructures, at the moment, the level of open standard for interoperability is no more than 5%, no more than that. For the other uh, element, we have to, we're, we're able to do that. But the cost to be able to integrate all of the data is a very high, and that means that we are waiting for that. That's the reason we are participating to the development of interoperability. That means that we have much more than three models. We have not only the site, we have not only the building, we have not only the, the, the infrastructures. We have much more models than that. You have the soil, you have the bridges, you have the tunnel. It's a totally different model. If, if you have to integrate that at the moment, we are, we, what we can say that at the moment, we are ready to do that, but the tools are not there. So we have to do that by ourselves. It's very important. So that, that there is two kinds of interoperability. The first is in, ter in terms of open standards to exchange, to exchange the information. And you have another one is a question about the I mean, beam, impl beam implementation. Then to be able to have international standard to be able to apply could be very useful. For instance, uh, if I compare two projects, even Middle East, for the rail or for the, or for the uh, urban area, the request in the bidding documentation is not the same, even the standard is not the same. One could be coming from UK, one could be coming from US. And then, uh, and the question of interoperability and BIM, why, I mean, the, the, the situation is to say, but I'm going to, I'm going to go very quickly on that, that we have to move from the building to the infrastructures for two reasons. The first one is because, uh, I mean, even building by itself in terms of resilience, it, it doesn't, it, 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 it means nothing. We need to integrate the building inside the environment, 
and to integrate the system to the building and so on. And the second reason why I explained uh, earlier in terms of the massive market could be, will be in the, in the future upon the uh, urban area. And in the urban area, the question of infrastructure is very crucial. We can say that urban area or urban infrastructures is a multimodal and multinodal linear infrastructure. We can say that more or less. So that means that the question to extend the standard from the building to the infrastructures is really crucial if we want to be able to solve the question of the urban area. And something very important, I mean, uh, because in, the previous, in, in one of the previous presentation, it seems that there is pressure that the construction industry is very late. We have to take care about that because the construction industry is not so late than that. I like this picture because it's coming from a contractor. Uh, it's a picture coming from uh, uh, Vinci. And they are working about smart construction. And smart construction means that, if I take an example of, 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 of the road, that at the moment we are able to think the road in other one way than we thought the road since, uh, I mean, uh, uh, 2,000 years. I mean, until now, we consider the road as a cross section. Every software is considering a road as a cross section. <laughs> but now, when you construct a road, it's no more a, 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 a cross section. It's a piece of a solid where you have the traffic for the, for, for the vehicle, but you have much more than that. You have also all of the information regarding the traffic, regarding uh, the way to construct, and so on and so on. The networks, and so on. If you take an example of Barcelona, for instance, they consider a street not for the vehicle, but, but for the networks. The networks for information, the networks for power, and so on and so on. And the vehicles is one only, one of the, uh, of, of the system inside of that. The first, the, first, the first issue. Second one is now we are able to consider that all of the data related to the, related to the construction or to the maintenance could be embedded inside the road by itself. And there is some experience to have some chips inside the solid, inside the road, which we are store all of the data concerning the maintenance and so on and so on. So that means that at the moment, we consider that BIM could be the prototype of, of what we are going to construct. That is the meaning of today. But I think that's the reason that we have some relationship between GIS and BIM. But we have to consider that for the asset management, the BIM model integrating GIS information and construction information will be not the, the prototype, but the avatar of what you have to manage. It's a big difference. That means that you have to work a lot about the modeling of the infrastructures. And what I want to underline very strongly, that there is no enough change of the modeling when you are using the existing software about that. They are still considering the road, the railway, as a linear, starting with the alignment, and then uh, be, uh, built by cross-section. So we have to change a lot about that. And if you consider a tunnel, you have a, this kind of problem plus another one. is how to consider the soil. Uh, at the moment, the best way, the, the only one way to consider the soil as a surface. But the soil and the underground is not a surface. It's a list of, I mean, solid, we don't know, well, really mixed together and at the moment, there is no standard to exchange this kind of, informi this kind of, of information. So that means if we consider the future, we have to consider that the model is a way to be able to manage uh, from domain system and components to manage in an active, proactive way uh, the, 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 the existing. Okay, and that's the reason BIM is not, in, not only, it's a radio process. I'm going to, to display something about that. 
We, on the project, the rail project, we have a, a PPP contract with, B, with BUIG in France in the Urban, uh, Urban, Urban Motorway in Marseille. And we have decided to, to promote the beam around a discussion around a, a, a beam use called safety audit. And we organized a virtual safety audit with the administration on this motorway based on a beam model. It's important because it's not only 3D, it's 3D with an uh, information system according to the reg regulation with some safety issues and so on and so on. Okay, so uh, uh, what is important is not the final, yeah, you, you have to, on this screen you can see two important ideas. The first one, we have the information system related to the regulation and we, what which was very important to explain to the uh, administration and to our design team that what you have on the screen, it is only what it is already designed. And that's a big, uh, it's a, a big cultural revolution that to explain that 3D is not the final step, uh, it's a step where we are. We are in situation in this project to produce a new model every two years, every two days. Okay. If each time we have new information, we update the model to be able to have a, uh, um, a, a model, a model, um, um, model review to prepare a design review. And the, 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 the model is not updated for the data drop, it's updated every day to be able to have a, a permanent uh, design review and discussion about the issue. And then we implement an uh, information system <coughs> to explain where we are about that. <coughs> but what you have to say very uh, frankly at the moment, that we are able to do that, but we are in advance if we compare the tools as they are. Uh, I'm speaking for, I'm not saying that uh, for, it's, it's a truth for every software vendor. To, to speak very frankly. Uh, uh, if you want to implement in a system of integra uh, uh, to integrate, I take the example, I'm going to, uh, I don't going to say, to, say to, 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 to name any, any software, but if you come from Civil 3D or from, um, from Geomansura and so on, you integrate also bridges or tunnels and so on, so you have a list of software providing data. And you have to integrate that in as well one software like, I don't give any name. <laughs> but in this case, you lost a lot of information in terms of, for instance, change and so on and so on. So we, we are able to do that, but the effort to maintain the, same, the, the right level of information is very huge for, for us. So again, the question is, the industry is ready. We are ready to, to, to do. But we ask to the software vendors to do a big effort for, for that. Huh? I mean, I always a discussion with the software vendors. They explain to me that we are not very good, uh, we are sp uh, spending a lot of money, we are not very good in, 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 in time and so on. Okay, maybe. But we need tools. And the tools are not here at the moment. It's very important to explain that even if we, go, if, if we, if we want to be able to introduce BIM in the real life of the project, to explain that it's not a dream, BIM. BIM could be a, night, a, a nightmare. Take care of what we want to do about that. You have to define very precisely what we are able to do, to define very carefully the BIM use, to say what is possible, what it is not possible. And then uh, I, I want to uh, go again. So uh, we have developed in France the mine project. I'll go very quickly on that. Uh, it's important because it's a large project with all of the contractor, uh, all of the contractors. We have Vinci, Buig, Eiffage, and so on. We have all of the engineers partic part participating to this project. We have all of the French laboratories and uh, like CSTB, BRGM, and so on. We have all of the um, professional union participating to that and a large part of our university. And we are deciding to, to work on the modeling for, for infrastructures. 
Right? It's very important because it's a four million research project funding by the industry, mainly by the industry, to push, uh, to push or to pull the administration to go in the direction of BIM. <coughs> okay, and the objective is to develop, I mean, open standard, uh, and that means that we need to cover IFC, CTGMA, PLCS, and so on, so on. So it's a very large scope. And we work, and, uh, and the big difference with the building is the scope. Uh, I take this image. Uh, if you take, a, at the moment, IFC is cover the building. <coughs> That's uh, the, the usual definition of the basic use case for BIM. But if you want to cover the, if you want to cover the infrastructures, you have also to cover, also to cover huh? building, tunnel, road, way, but also some different things over the infrastructures. Pavement is, is a, it's a vertical, it's a horizontal use case covering road, bridges, tunnel, not buildings, of course, <coughs> except Hydraulic, for instance, is not only for all, it's for all of the infra. So that changed totally the way to, to, to think the scope of what does it mean, uh, what does it mean interoperability. Okay, and uh, something, I, I want to finish up about that. Uh, okay, and then uh, one of the problems uh, is when you work on this transversal uh, issue, for instance, environmental issue like hydraulic and so on, that is an example of drawings. You will see on that that the level of definition or the level of details is not unique <coughs> for this drawing. So you have to manage different things. And it's very important because if you are not able to manage that, when you want to use the model, you are not able to extract what it is relevant of your model to work in terms of uh, uh, design review and so on and so on. So we are working on this uh, idea. See, at the moment, what is used in CTGML is a question of level of detail. So you start from an object and zoom by zoom you, define, you are able to define a level of detail. It's combining like that. If you go to the uh, uniclass or omniclass, you have the level of definition. The level of definition is related to the life cycle. For each data drop, you define, from a taxonomy, you define a level of definition. <coughs> But if you are speaking about issue, like uh, safety audit, like environmental uh, assessment and so on, so it does not work for that. You need to, to start from the different ontology, You are using part of the taxonomy, and for each one, and you, are, you have to insert the system, and you, you need to extract from different class and so on, the right level <coughs> of detail or definition. And something <coughs> has to be defined, and we are working about that. We can call level of decision. We know that in, in UK, they are working on the idea of level of information, maybe it's more or less the same concept to be able to extract, to be able, I mean, to, to, to speak uh, uh, frankly, to, ex to, to be able to define a model view definition according, not to a, d a data drop, but according to a, d a decision to, to be done. That is for the same project like in Marseille. That means you are, you are managing on the cloud the model. And we are able to re-implement in a in 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 in, 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 a, in, a, in a part of the uh, of the model, and you can see that inside that you have different kind of information, and we are able to display the different the different object, okay. And for instance, in this case. We have uh, added uh, um, a, a bridge to protect. Uh, we are, we are here we, are, we added a, a bridge to protect against the noise. There. 
And then we have, developed, we have ins inserted the information related to the, related to the, noise, the, the noise survey. So that is the, 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 the survey before the, before the wall. Okay, you can see that you have some red, red issue, uh, that, and then after the after the after the bridge, uh, okay. All right, you have some some change here. Okay, it's just to show that we are at the moment able to mix the information coming from GIS because the noise survey is coming from GIS and and the model. So it's just to show that we are able to do that. The effort to do that is not is, is really big. And for us, the question of to make some, uh, uh, some the question of um, productivity in terms of availability is re is really crucial. But that, I think that it's really the way of where the owners are waiting for us. Uh, I, I wanted to show that because I think that okay. We are able to do that, but I mean, the, 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 the possibility of progress on this issue are, 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 really, are really big. Thank you.